child like mine and that's where I paint from that's where I paint from that's how I choose my colors and so let's go back to working on this so I am working here by applying the deep space which is a, this dark blue it's my favorite go-to blue and this is just getting started and this is really working in a lot of layers I just want you to be able to see this come through again about this point when I had started painting it's 7 o'clock in the morning and I finished at 10 o'clock and that's with taking several breaks in between so just a little over two hours of this I'm painting so one of the things that I would like to say is I had shared with you guys that um, the my three colors was this dark blue along with a turquoise as well as a gray. Now, a, my, I usually try to make sure that one of my primary colors that I'll be using is some sort of neutral color. And for me, I mean, that can be like a gray, it can be a tan, maybe like a a sage greeny, a medium sage green, something. But to me, I think gray is a great neutral color. And that means that when you're like, you have the blue and then you paint on the, say the turquoise and you go over it with gray, what you get, and maybe not all over it, but in sections, is a beautiful blending. Do you see that's exactly what happened right here? on the left side of this door it just blended and it really created a different color and it begins to tie my darker bolder colors together it begins to add some interest into just um to me it ties in a lot of like so the memories that i'm painting from a lot of these are from when i went to oceanside california to the beach to the pier and you do while there are deep blues and electric blues as we've seen there's also a lots of um you'll see gray and so like on the sand and then the rocks and in the clouds when there's a cloudy sky gray around the pier and so it just blends in it overlaps and especially when you do it where you're still working while the paint is wet and so I am the as I'm painting I'm using one brush and some furniture artists furniture flippers would probably gasp at this but I'm dipping the same brush into all the different paint cans right like I don't care if the paint color gets compromised a little bit if a little bit of the gray gets into the blue and vice versa it's all going on together at the same armoire, the same piece. And I mix colors so much that I do not worry about the integrity of the color washing down unless I am painting something one solid color, like on a custom order, or if I have a white or a similar color that I do not want to get dirtied up, so to speak. But otherwise, I'll dip in and out with a wet brush into several different paint cans because I'm always mixing and stirring anyway. What is on my brush right here is I've had the turquoise on my brush, but I also dip it in gray. And I and then you'll that's the color that's coming about, the lighter color that you'll see. I think one of the biggest things that I could share with you on this technique is that I'm offloading when I dip my brush into the paint like I'll dip it into turquoise and then directly into the gray like right after to get a little bit of both but throughout painting this whole armoire when I dip my brush into the paint can I am offloading a lot of the paint onto my little paint cart that I have because I don't want a lot of paint on my brush when I'm applying the paint and so you may think well that's such a big waste to like put because I'll literally put about 
you know, just wipe off half of the paint on my brush onto my paint cart, which is just a little stand on wheels that Louie made me. And so it's not wasting that paint because when my brush gets kind of dry and I just need a little dab of color to add here or there, I'll dip into that little section on my paint cart and grab a little paint from it. And so it's really just about having fun. Right here, I am just kind of playing with the colors. I am painting to enjoy. I'm letting my colors wash together. I'm dipping in and out of different, my three different colors. And on from a technical, like, oh, what is the word that I'm looking for from just a technique as the word I'm looking for, I would say is just remembering for achieving this type of look. If you have like three colors, they can be soft colors, say like, oh, it could be pink and yellow, or it could be bold colors like um, a fuchsia and a teal or something, you know. But having, I found, having a, um, a medium, just neutral color, like a gray. And my gray that I use is like a pencil lead, gravel type gray. That's that type of color. But have, that's a neutral, just brings everything together. It blends things well. And I don't do blending like you've seen on a lot of videos. That's not how I blend. I don't really try to go for that look where it's all washed out in the middle and darker on the end. I think it's beautiful. I'm not seek, saying, speaking anything against it. That's just not how, like, th that's not the type of blending that I'm talking about. It's really allowing colors to transition into each other in a really pretty way. So having a neutral color like a gray or a tan or a sand is a great way to do that. Just for the sake of you not having to hear me talk throughout the entire video, I'm just going to let um, some music play for a little bit and let you guys kind of just watch the process for a little while and then I'll come back on and we'll talk some more about what's going on. But you see right here in the, well, I was talking about the school bus yellow, just a few swipes of it on the side just to accent. You know, I like, I kind of bring it in in just subtle ways. And I, I didn't want it to stand out as a really bright yellow that stood out like a sore thumb. So I offloaded a lot from my brush, got some in the corner, some in the side, and a little bit in the middle and you can see in the middle it gave a nice pretty wash i will come in later and kind of go over that a little bit but i'm gonna just let you watch for a little bit and then we'll come back and discuss some more
and the detail part that you just saw think of the word drift like sometimes where you just have a little bit of paint left on your brush and you may turn it sideways or however and you just let a little bit of that paint drift off in a certain section and what you'll get is that very like authentic looking kind of old world or vintage look where there's different layers of paint peeking through so it's not about a big glob here and a big glob there but a little bit drifted in washed in dry brushed on wet brushed and smoothed mixed together with other colors you're just painting very fluidly and I do believe you have to paint without stress in this like you have to just trust the process and enjoy yourself and have fun and just be willing to say I'm gonna get this part done and go work on the other sections and come back and look and see what this needs that's what I did on this in just a little over two hours and it all came together really nicely Y'all, I feel pretty bad that, like, my body, I am in the way of you seeing every brush and stroke and stuff. I, There's been times during this where I tried to move to the side and do it, but then I found out that my brush strokes would be off or I was kind of painting sideways and I wasn't able to, you know, get it done the way I wanted to. So the video in this is secondary and actually getting this painted was my primary uh, goal. So I just apologize if there's times where you feel like, oh, you're kind of in a way we can't quite see the way we would want to. I'm sorry. I hope that when I'll move out of the way, you'll be able to see. And hopefully there's, you know, enough of this video where you'll be able to kind of see what's going on. As I'm working on painting this piece, yo, know, I'm not stressed out wondering what it's gonna look like when it's done, um, if it's coming along okay. I truly am just enjoying the process. The memory thing that I told you guys about is very, very real. And I specifically had these memories in mind while I'm painting it. And so I'm just painting with just the the fondness of those memories, just really enjoying the moment and being able to create and thinking about like what did, what was the water like on this day and what was it like on that and what else from the trip stood out to me and so I had some other colors and you'll notice I had incorporated oh kind of like an olivey green 
and that really came from a lot of the vegetation and plus I just love mixing green with blue I love I we had talked about having some good neutral colors so that olive green which primarily you can see on the right side and even the lower right side of the front of the armor um, it was a custom color that I had mixed together just using you know some blue and um, just some yellow and really mixing together to get a nice soft olive green and it it is just such a neutral color uh, kind of an earth tone color that blended in and washed in well with the rest of these colors that I'm using. There had been some people that had commented and said, you know, like that was because I had shared this to a furniture group and a couple of people had commented and said that it was impossible to paint a piece like this in under three hours. And, you know, just from at this video at this stage, like it's probably been an actual real time painting for where we're at. As you can see, I'm just taking a guess, but 35 minutes of painting I mean if that and so like I'm not skipping out I haven't skipped out on any parts of the painting and throughout the um, the whole video just for the sake so you wouldn't have a two hour and 20 minute video there were parts I sped up on a little bit and a few minutes here and there that I left out just to keep the for the sake of the video I just wanted you to see like Right here, this is for the whole front of the armor where we're at now. Probably 30, 35 minutes of painting, if that. And, I mean, maybe not even that much. So, and I love, like, honestly, could just do this right here all on the sides, too. And could call it done. So, it's not hard when you're not trying to recreate what somebody else has done. And you're not trying to overthink and analyze every movement. But you're painting from a few colors that you like because they remind you of something and you just enjoy the process and do a little here and there. It just comes along so easily and so smoothly. This is chalk paint. It dries quickly, but I also paint in layers. So I just keep going right back over. But by the time I was done painting what I was doing at the bottom, everything on the top is red is dry. and dry or wet when you're painting in layers it just you know it I don't know that it really matters and so I guess you do want some parts to dry if you want to come back in with some accent colors but this paint just all of it dried just within a few minutes and was ready for all that additional detail
what I am specifically doing right here is my three primary colors the blue the turquoise and the gray I am dipping my brush into each lightly into each color offloading most of the paint and then just doing a, a, a light wash over the top just to bring everything together a little bit better I didn't want like just blue and the layer under that just green I wanted to kind of wash together and so that's what I'm working on You had just seen me dip my brush into the pink can and then I just washed a, like brushed off a lot of that onto the my paint cart um, just so I can start on my sides with just a little bit of paint that's like one way to avoid streaking is to you know to to not have too much paint and then also when I'm painting like this and doing lots of layers I do want it to dry pretty quickly and not using too much paint can help that to happen. And I also want to come back and pick up some of those colors that are all blending together on my paint cart. Come and pick them back up and apply them in little swipes and layers. I take my brush underneath the ridges to make sure that it's painted under the ridges. Dipping into the deep space blue. And you guys, I don't have a real plan like this color is going to go here. That color is going to go there. I just know that it's going to come together. Um, it, it, I could have put this deep space blue at the top, at the side. The I mean, just really kind of rotating in sections, but without no specific rhyme or reason where they will go. I could have started both of these sides with the turquoise, because I'm going to tie them together with the gray. I'm going to kind of overlap them anyway. And so that is, my system is, there's not a real system. If you love that really pretty kind of like sea foam color there at the top center um, right above like the panel where I'm painting now that's just the turquoise blended in with the gray it's just dipping my brush a little bit in the turquoise a little in the gray offloading it and painting so look how beautiful of a color you get from just mixing turquoise and gray and, you know when you mix blue and gray you'll get a lighter misty kind of rainy day blue when you mix turquoise and blue you get something very electric and now i'm bringing in the olive green again i'll have a little yellow that i'll apply um i just want some accents and touches of this olive green but my my three primary colors are staying the same with the deep space blue, the turquoise, and the gray. 
but I'm using them in a lot of different ways by letting that gray just, you know, come in and play with both of them in on different ways. And, you know, you guys could do that. If you ever mixed a gray with a pink, you get the most gorgeous mauve. I'm later on this armoire, I'm gonna introduce a coral color, which is also from my memories from watching the sunset over the Pacific Ocean from our hotel in Cal. It was just gorgeous. And so I mixed red and yellow to get a coral. And, and you know, red and yellow makes orange, but if you play with your like oh your ratios you can create the most gorgeous tropical sunset kind of coral look and i'm bringing that in a little later because to me it goes very very well with these colors I think one thing that I would like to point out is that I'm not in a rush. Even though I finished this in a little over two hours, I'm not rushing through it. Like there's there's no race. I didn't say to myself, you know, when I had started this armor, I started painting it like, I wanna finish in two hours. I wanna finish in three. I'll tell you what was on my mind time-wise is I had woken up at four o'clock on this morning that I was painting got to the shop at 6 30 worked on a custom order for half an hour and started this what was on my mind was I wanted to be done by noon I didn't know how long it would take me but I wanted to be done by noon I wanted to go home I haven't I've neglected my garden I wanted to work in a garden I have a little area where I needed to mow and then I wanted to take the rest of the day off. Like, I try to be very intentional about carving out, out time that I take off and set aside and I'm not at this studio. And like, that's one of the benefits of working for myself. I have days where I'll go to, a few days a week, where I'll go to the shop around noon and I'll work from like noon to six or eight o'clock at night. Um, days where I just get caught up and I'm like working on several pieces and I get a lot done and that's nice but I also know that I wanted to take today off at noon so that was my goal but I knew I wouldn't have to rush so I hope you're able to see that is like this was never this was not an ordeal where I just it was not in my mind like Oh, I want to create this piece to say that I did it in two or three hours. That just never entered my mind at the time. It did it. And it still isn't. But I wanted people to see the time frame that when you paint for yourself, when you paint, draw forth colors from your memories that you love, that you are painting from really a place of peace, a place of gratitude and enjoyment, and things just move and flow very naturally. And I think technique wise, offloading a lot of your paint, you're not gonna make a lot of mistakes. You're not gonna have clumpy paint or a lot of brush stroke marks. Um, your colors are gonna wash to together well. They're gonna move. As you see, everything is remaining very fluid um, with using these three colors together and even going back and dipping in what is on like my paint cart and then also I will brush several times in many cases throughout painting this armor and I will keep brushing until every last drop of paint is taken from my brush just for the look that I want to get to use up all the paint it is just working out very well so I just keep stretching it and going all the way down that allows for the painting process to come along pretty quickly it'll I'm using less paint um so while I'm offloading it so I don't have thick amounts of paint I'm still going back to get it and using it so you could honestly get three colors three four colors like 
of paint, like say four quarts of different colors. You could mix and match those and make so many different colors. It could create so many different pieces from just four quarts of paint and you would have many different colors. So if you're thinking about whatever brand you choose, it doesn't matter. Um, there, in many ways, I've used the most expensive brands that are like $50 for a quart to the Walmart brands, to the Lowe's brands that I haven't noticed a huge difference in any of them. And I think when I make the homemade chalk paint, I see like uh, it levels better. There is a little grittiness, doesn't bother me because look at the type of pieces that I do like it's okay to have for me to have some texture that may not be okay if you're trying to get like a super pristine finish I don't try to get super pristine finishes and it all just comes together and works because the colors work out well and the overall style of it works out well and so that's just a little tidbit that I wanted to share it's just look how quickly this is coming along it's only been maybe 10 minutes or so on this side and maybe a little bit more not much and so it's just the side is about done i'm going to do the same to similar to the other side and then a few accent colors and we'll be wrapping this up pretty soon
the side, you'd notice that I'd had that kind of um, school bus yellow, and I did a, a portion of that. Again, having offloaded a lot of paint on my brush, a little on her bring. I won't say a little. It's not like dry brushing. There is a, a good amount, but it just wasn't overloaded. So I brought that yellow up, and I had a little turquoise dipped in gray, and I went all the way up and down with it, and it just blended it in beautifully where there's that um, touch and coat of yellow, but it's blended in. It's just not smack dab out of place. In this section right here, um, much earlier, I had applied, there was a, just a small little surface crack in a couple of places, so I put some wood filler on it, and that had had time to dry, so I'm giving it a sanding, we'll dust that off, and then we'll be painting this side. I'm trying to get out of the way and paint with my left hand so the camera can see better, but it is it's awkward and a little difficult. Um, I'm sorry, it's just hard for me to paint with my left hand and it can be kind of difficult to get out of your way, but I, I do my best as much as I can and it's definitely something that I will try to work on. Um, hopefully you can understand. I still hope you're able to pick up as much as you can um, from this makeover video. I don't know if I should call it a tutorial. I hope 
that it is helpful in that way. Um, definitely still need to work on getting out of the way. But again, this is just primary goal for me is the video is secondary goal and the primary is just to, to finish this up and um yeah I'm I'm just kind of feeling how this is coming along it is just working for me really well and here pretty soon we're gonna incorporate some coral and that's kind of exciting and um but what I've been doing throughout this process is just kind of going back and forth in different sections with my primary colors and then have come in with a school bus yellow and my kind of olive green from time to time for accents. I don't want them to play a, those two colors to pay, play a major role in the armor, just some interesting accents. Now this is where I'm incorporating my coral and again I just mix that using um, I mix that yes using that red and yellow it just uh, I think a heavy heavier variation or ratio not variation of the yellow than the red so if you add a, a little bit of red to more yellow then you'll get a really pretty coral and you can just kind of play with those colors and you know, can it see what it leads, turns into and leads to for you. And I've always found that colors look lighter when they go on furniture than what they look like in the can. Just bringing in, incorporating a little bit of that green. And I've also dipped my green into some gray. And I did forward through um, the rest of painting that side because it was extremely similar to what I did on the first side Just for the sake of this video So what I'm doing right here is I have my coral color It looks like I'm dipping my brush into a red paint can But that red paint can is actually I've mixed it It's red around the rim, but inside is where I mixed my coral color so I'm just playing with some accents and just really bringing that coral into a, a few different places. important to note that doing when you're doing detail or not just like the ornate detail but like edges and trim and when you really want that kind of rubbed paint look um, like there's been layers going through you use your paintbrush in different ways so a lot of times what's really helpful for me is to just go is to paint on a piece in certain area until most of my the color is off my brush and then uh, apply a harder pressure and use it and I use it in circles um, circular motions and then sideways sometimes so we sometimes think that just using our brush in a back and forth or up and down motion applying paint is the only way 
but when I do this boho type look, I use my paintbrush in many different ways. And so for there, there's lots of um, grooves and ornate detail, and I just wanted to get a little coral in there. Um, and then I can always decide from there if I want to cover it up or if I want to go back over it or I want to accent it. I will say at the top of this on the detail, I'm not trying to do everything symmetrical and even and consistent. Um, like you'll see it's the brighter coral is in the center, but and on one side, on the right, it's a little brighter and the left, it's very it's more subtle and i like i mean i won't stop here we'll add some more color but i for this boho type of style i like it when things are just a little bit off kilter like i wouldn't say off kilter but out of the norm unexpected unpredictable where it makes you want to stop and stare and study a piece and i do think that is what art is about is kind of stopping and staring and studying something like you know why is this there what does this look like what do I think of this like does it work does it not work anything that draws you in like that truly is art and you can even decide oh you don't like it but you can walk away from it thinking that did draw me in and make me ponder it and then I at that point I think where art is successful. Now, because this is going in, hopefully, one day somebody's home, hopefully it will sell, um, I expect it will, that I also want it to be beautiful and I want it to work together. But I don't want this piece to be a predictable piece. That's why I'm not worried about colors overlapping, and going outside of the lines. I don't want that type of precision and predictability. I want something a little bit more intentionally messy, a little bit more loose and liquid and flowing together. Right here I'm adding another memory and th this memory is from one of the first movies that I ever went to see and it was also one of my favorite childhood memories and it's of um, the fox and the hound. <laughs> oh, what is not to love about the fox and the hound? I mean just what a great story of friendship. But what was the dog's name? The dog's name was Copper. And it's just, my dad took me to see that movie. It was in Lawton, Oklahoma. And I just loved it. I love Copper. I thought it would work well. I'm using, this is a um, Rust-Oleum Metallic Copper. I just got a small little tub of it. And I just poured some into the lid of the little tub. And I brush it on straight from the lid. My brush is too wide to fit into the little container. And I thought, boy, this would just make a wow statement. I felt like I needed something and just pulled from just another, you know, memory that I love, something that I carry with me and 
so I love pod and copper on box in the hand and decided to add some of this on here <clears throat> I think you could have added gold it would have been pretty I think you could have added silver it would have been pretty my color scheme seems to be in some ways there is a cool scheme as in cool as in tones like warm and cool tones but I also I think I have a little bit of both honestly and so that just for the kind of electric blue that's on there plus the greens I felt like copper would go well with that and so again just pulling from something that I love and let's see how this turns out When we went to California, my daughter's wedding dress was white and there was also white sandy beaches. So I wanted to put a little bit of white in there. Also had a little bit of pink, just a tiny little bit of pink, like a tiny bit brushed on in, in a couple of places at the bottom. Just wanted a little hint of it, like the pink of a Pacific sunset. And so we're gonna brush some white on detail. It's gonna make it pop some and I'm also, so it won't be too startling of a contrast. I'm going to go back over it as well with a different shade. I decided to outline the doors in white and then I'll go back over them with another color so I feel like just the white itself was taken away from my primary colors in my of the turquoise blue and gray and my primary colors really are the stars of the show and that's what I want the focus to be on so I wanted a contrast but I didn't want it to be so distracting so I added the white and then we'll brush over that real lightly with another color just to tone that down some. It still gives like the contrast, the depth, the dimension. I like how it sep like kind of makes the individual doors stand out, but I just want everything to blend in a little bit better. And so we'll start with the white and then go over it.
I am working in my shop early in the morning and I'm alone and from time to time I think I hear noises so I just go and check to see if anybody is there. I tell you, I love how these colors are coming together. It just, it really does remind me of our trip to California, our, the great time we had. Reminds me very much of a Pacific um, sunset. It's just a bunch, a gorgeous blend of colors coming together very seamlessly. I mentioned earlier about going over the white with another color and so I'm going over it with my turquoise. On this part right here I know I'm getting closer to the end <clears throat> excuse me so I'm taking care of some of the cleanup and detail like inside the door frames like just going over the edges and stuff and making sure that's all appropriately covered
on this copper detail I'm just using the detail brush I get my detail brushes at Hobby Lobby and once in a while even at Dollar General I can find some like good little size ones that I like but I just I buy them you know I get my Hobby Lobby on sale and again not trying to be super pristine I don't care if colors on this overlap a little bit I'm perfectly fine with that because it fits in well with the whole style decided to go on the inside of just the outline the trim of the panels because I felt like with the copper I felt like that would really make the copper stand down a lot more Over here I'm going over and just adding copper to the sides and just carrying some of that through as well as a little bit of the olive green to the sides. I'm carrying some of my other color around uh, to the left side and I'll also add my copper detail to the wall panels there. So we are coming to the end of finishing up this armor. Just a few final touches. Thank you so much for coming along with me. I know this is a long video, um, but I really wanted to show it as much as possible from start to finish. There was some editing, I cut out a few parts, but overall, maybe 25 minutes of the video was cut out just for the sake of the time. I just, you guys, I hope that you're inspired to create from your memories, from colors that you love and that make you happy, and that's where we find a lot of success.